If you're an experienced lathe hand, you do not want to watch this video. But if you're a beginner and you want to know about chasing a thread, we're going to start from the very beginning and talk about the fundamentals of the lathe itself. And then we're going to show you how you set it up to chase the thread. And then we're going to go in the back and we're going to do one. Well, let's talk about the lathe itself. This happens to be an old LeBlanc lathe, which we have got, we probably have 20,000 hours on it or more. It's been a great piece of equipment for us, still functioning. And that's the one that we're going to use when we go in the back and show you how to chase the thread. This is the, of course, the main gearbox. This is the chuck, which you clamp your part in, the carriage, one that goes to the right and left, one that goes in and out, and then there's a cross slide as well. We'll talk about that a little later. Tail stock for supporting, that goes in and out. And of course, we have the lever to turn it on, that turns the spindle on, so does that lever. And then we have the ability to change the speeds via these levers here and here, and the ability to change, that is the spindle speed. But also, we have the ability to change the carriage speed, either going right to left or in and out. And that's how we do it with this box right here and with the levers up here. So that's an overview. This is an important part of the lathe as well, and that we deal with chasing a thread. And we're going to also show you what that's all about in a little bit. How do we change gears for the spindle speed? There's the easiest way to keep this in mind is that this side of the lathe controls this mechanism over here, which is the X and Y axis feed. That's what these shafts are. How do you control the spindle speed? That's what these two are for. If you take a look up here, you can see there's a chart here. And the chart gives you different combinations of this lever and this lever, sort of like an overdrive in a car, those of you that remember what that is and shifting different gears. You can also, going back to the feeds, this is speed, this is feed. You can reverse the feed, and this is another one of the combinations for the feed. This one, which is here, and the combination of this guy down here, and this rack over here. So there's one, two, three, four different levers that gives you all these different kinds of combinations. This chart talks about threads, and feeds. Threads meaning if you're going to chase a thread, feed means that you're not going to chase a thread, but you want to move the carriage automatically as you're removing stock. That's what this will do. Let's talk about uh, this guy. It looks like 36 thousandths of feed rate per revolution or 11 and a half threads per inch, depending on what you're doing at that time. Are you chasing a thread? Or are you just removing stock? Removing stock, chasing a thread. How do we change the speed and feed there? That's pretty cool. That's pretty easy. You do that by using this lever. As you can see, it has three different positions. Hence the A, B, C, A, B, C. And then there's an E lever and an F lever. And that is way up here at the top, right there. So there's our two levers that we have to be concerned about, the E and the F. This one, you can reverse the feed. That is, you can make this go feed to the right or make it feed to the left. Or you can make this carriage feed in or feed out. So you can reverse your speed by doing that. Let's assume that now we're going to have to chase a thread. What do we need to do to chase a thread? Well, we're going to need to keep an eye on this. I want to call it a gauge because that's really what it is. But it's kind of a synchronizer. And when you move the carriage around, this moves as well and so does this. What's the difference between the two? Well, this is always rotating when you're moving the carriage back and forth. So if the carriage is moving, it's moving. Why do you want it? Well, let's suppose you need to go a certain depth and you want to stop at a certain spot. That'll give you pretty accurate reading. You can stop it within a couple of thousands. So that's why we look at that. And we can zero that in too if we, if we choose to. But what's the other one for? The other one's a synchronizer. What do I mean synchronizer? Well, when you're chasing a thread, and you make one cut and you come back out and you got to go in for the second cut, the screw right here doesn't really know where you left off. That's why you find one of the numbers on the synchronizer, usually an even number, and you can set it. As soon as it gets to two, you engage it and you make your second cut. You back it back out. When you need to make another cut, you, you need to get it back to two or to four again. That's you engage it real quick. And that allows you to chase the thread in the same spot. So you're always in the groove where you're supposed to be. How do we do that? This is the carriage, which allows you to go right and left or and in and out, which is X and Y. 
There's a dial on there which allows you to feed in and you can regulate the amount of feed that you want, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, however you want to take, however much you want to take off. And remember we had the indicator, this allows you to go from right and left, and the indicator will allow you a precision stop one way or another. There are two levers here on this carriage. This one is to move the carriage from the right to the left when you're cutting steel or removing steel, removing stock, and you can pull it out and it'll move the other carriage in and out. On the other hand, this lever is used for thread cutting and you can see it a little bit better back here. This is a different view. This is the one that is required for accuracy and repeatability when we're cutting a thread. Again, thread cutting, stock removal. Cutting a thread is really pretty cool. I like doing it. It's a lot of fun. And you think, well, I'm going to screw up. I'm going to screw up. Yeah, it's a little concerning, but it really is fun. Supposing you don't know anything about threads, this book does. This is a book that I've had in my office for a lot of years. I think it was copyrighted in 89, something like that, or 90. I don't remember. Uh, it looks like it was copyrighted in 92. In any case, mine, which I can't find, was a green cover, and it was back in 1952 or something like that. I can't believe I'm that old. Anyway, it's a great reference book. It's kind of a geek's book. It's an engineer's book. It will tell you everything and anything you want to know about our industry. Speeds, feeds, types of steel, heat treating. How much stock should I remove if I'm using this kind of a carbide insert or if I'm using a Borazon insert? Dimensions of bolts, nuts, statistics showing uh, the heat treating, the tensile strength, everything is here. Th this is a geek's book, and I, I say that with respect, because the engineers really need this book. I've had it in the shop, and I, I recommend you get one. Probably get one on eBay a lot cheaper than you would buying a new one. And I don't think you need a new one anyway. If it's 10 years old, it's not going to make that much difference, believe me. Unless you're really into space science, or you're into very, very high precision, or government work where you've got to have traceability, that's a different story. But for the most part, for general machining, I don't usually reference a book. If I want to know how fast a drill is going to go, or how fast it needs to go, and what the speed rate should be, that's a feel and you develop that over time. You'll know where the break point is and where the machining time is. You just get a feel for that. So I don't typically use the book, but in the case of chasing a thread, there's a simple chart right here that I think works just fine. And how are we gonna measure it? Well, there's a lot of ways to measure it. You can measure it with a thread gauge. We're gonna use a simple method. We're gonna use thread wires. And as you can see right here, we put two wires on the bottom, one on the top. There's a dimension a data dimension that we have to measure over that to make sure that we have the pitch diameter the right size. We do that with micrometers and the wires. A little tricky holding a pair of wires with a micrometer on the bottom and one on the top and not letting them fall out of your hand. And we'll show you how we're going to do that in the back when we chase the thread. So this is kind of what I like to use, not the book. However, the book is terrific, believe me. If you need to know anything about anything and if you need to go to sleep at night because you're bored, open up to anywhere from page five to page 2600 it'll put you to sleep there's a lot of great reading material in here that'll make you yawn and make you very tired what are we going to do in the back well one of the guys came up to us and they said they need a thread chased half inch diameter and they need the thread to run about two inches up here i chose a piece of hex stock which happens to be three quarter inch and why did i choose that well i don't have to mill the slots in there or mill the flats in there rather they're already there, so we're just going to turn this down, chase the thread. So keep an eye on the next video coming up. I want to thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Tell your friends about us. Watch us on Facebook, Twitter, and uh, what's the other one? Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, I always forget. I don't want to keep leaving Instagram out. I don't know why. But anyway, so thanks for watching. We'll catch up with you next time.